We only get so many shots in the rock. That's all we're guaranteed, man. Six opportunities. Irrespective of the, of the team we're playing. Six shots in front of our family and friends. Okay? That's what we got. All right? We talk about it all the time. The standard that you set for each other. That you hold each other to every single day in practice and every single game. I thought Coach Wozniak said a great point yesterday. We want to be the thermostat, not the thermometer. We set the standard. We set the temperature. It doesn't go up and down. We set it, and it's all out. And when you can't go all out, you come out, and the next guy goes in, and he's all out. That's a sign of maturity. But no matter what, you play all out. And they feel the helmet, man. They feel that black helmet. When they're done, they feel the black and gold, man. They say no mas. That's it. That's when you know you got a tough team, man. When they say no mas. You're the thermostat. You're not going to be the thermometer. Does everybody understand how we get after them from start to finish? This edition of Southern Miss Sports Today with Todd Munkin is presented by Bancor South, right where you are, and brought to you in part by the City of Hattiesburg, a proud sponsor of Southern Miss Athletics, UPS. From figuring it out to getting it done, UPS is here to help. Hattiesburg Coca-Cola, want a taste of everything? Drink Coke Zero with real Coke taste and zero calories. We'll be back with this week in Southern Miss football right after this. Everybody, welcome to Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Todd Munkin, presented by Bank Corp South. Golden Eagles, a big win on Saturday, 52-6 over Austin P. And, and Todd, as you think back on Saturday's game and, and went back and looked at it, what sort of stood out to you in the ball game? Well, I really thought that our defense played outstanding, and it started up front. Uh, we gave them nothing. I thought we had an advantage there, and it came true. We started off a little bit choppy offensively. Uh, not that we weren't ready, not that we weren't prepared. We just didn't make a few plays that would have got us rolling a little bit early. But uh, a blocked punt by Picasso Nelson got us going. But I really liked for the second week in a row our guys' energy. And uh, I really thought they played hard for the second week in a row. What would you like that the defense did in the ball game? They really controlled the line of scrimmage. I know that in the ball game. Well, they didn't block us very well. They just didn't. I mean, our defensive line, when they didn't want to be blocked, didn't get blocked. I thought our guys on the perimeter covered well. So I really thought that uh, I was a little bit, I would say, anxious to see us play, how we would back up such an emotional game the week before. And our guys really uh, really had a great week and, and came to play Saturday. I'll ask you about that. You had said the biggest challenge for that ball game was trying to get over the emotion of the week before and sort of get them emotional and invested in this ball game. Were you, did you feel like you were able to do that? Sure. I thought our guys uh, from Tuesday on got better. And, and understood we only get so many shots in the rock. And our guys really, uh, again, I was, I was excited to see how we'd respond, and I thought we responded well. Offensively, of course, Nick Mullins had a, a, another uh, good performance. You had a lot of young receivers out there and uh, ran the ball very well in the ball game. We did, and, and, and the younger your team is, the more choppy it's going to be. And I think that added to it. You know, Nick wasn't as sharp as, as, as he can be. And we had some mistakes out on the perimeter, some drops. Um, some things that we've got to get cleaned up. But once we got going a little bit, 
Um, and as I thought it would be, it'd be about us. And the mistakes that we made stopped us from scoring, but I was, I was happy to see our guys come up with some big plays. We'll see in the highlights, Edo Smith had a good ball game, caught a touchdown pass, uh, ran 75 yards for a touchdown. Talk about him and how he sort of emerged and how maybe he's a little better than he was a year ago. Well, from the moment he got here a year ago, you could see he's explosive. Uh, he hits the hole hard. He's a hard guy to bring down just by the nature of the way he runs and his stature, really good burst and quickness. And he's really improved. I think really where he's really improved is his ball skills. You know, he always had a real knack for running it, but he's really improved there, and he's one of our most explosive players. Southern Miss and Austin P. The Eagles win it 52-6. to Let's go back to that Saturday afternoon at The Rock and take a look at all the highlights. Taylor in the shotgun, back pedals to throw the left-hander. He's going to be sacked. Dylan Bradley got him back inside the 25 at about the 23. Davis gets the handoff, got hit in the backfield by a couple of Golden Eagles and stopped. And this time only Casey Martin goes back. Eagles coming after it, and they block it, and it will go down or on the near sidelines, and Southern Miss stumbles with it, but goes down to the six. Curtis Michael recovered it, but it was Picasso Nelson who got the punt block. And it's Richard again, and oh, Mullins keeps it. Touchdown, Southern Miss. He put it in the belly of Richard, pulled it out. Nick goes around the right side and scores on the two-yard touchdown run. Touchdown, Southern Miss. Davison is a fullback, handoff, Edo Smith trying to turn the right corner, cuts back in, cuts back again, across the 40, and out to about the 43-yard line. Trey Taylor, the quarterback, works with Tay Davis back there with him. Leaves it with Davis, got hit in the backfield, bounced off, then got hit by Dylan Bradley. Edo Smith right behind Nick Mullins. Davis back there as the fullback, handoff Edo, right side with some room. Down the right sidelines at the 40, and down at the 50, got around his man. He's gonna take it the distance. Touchdown, Edo Smith. That'll be a 75-yard touchdown run by Edo. Dancing along the far sidelines, he was able to stay in bounds. Mullins, play I should think, he looks to throw, down the center of the field, got a man, caught by Corey Robertson, down inside the 20, and down the near the 15 yard line, and uh, the Eagles are marking down at the 17. Mullins takes a snap, looking to throw, into the end zone, got a man, that's gonna be caught for a touchdown. Touchdown Southern Miss, DJ Thompson, kind of a little short down and out, back towards the right corner of the end zone. Mullins with a shotgun and a play action fake. Mullins drops to throw. Looking, looking, fires to the sidelines. Casey Martin makes a catch, breaks a tackle at the 20, breaks another tackle, gonna take it down to near the 10 yard line. There's not many more that play as hard, as physical as Casey Martin. It was actually open early and Nick uh, finally got it to him late on the sideline. Nick will mark the signals, take the stamp, drop the throw, looking left, throwing to Robertson in the end zone, caught for a touchdown, Southern Miss. Corey Robertson went down into the end zone then made a quick break to the left side. Taylor takes the stamp, drops the throw, the lefty under pressure, gets away, pulls up, still looking, nowhere to go, he's gonna be sacked. Xavier Thigpen in there sacked him. Richard along his left side. Mullins drops to throw. Steps up, dumps it out of the backfield. It's caught by Martin. Martin's got a block and around the corner of the right side. Out of bounds. He runs down around the 18 to stop the clock with 56 seconds to go. Here's Mullins, takes his stamp, leaves it with Ida who cuts right side. Now back up the middle. Ida running away from it. The 45 at the 50. He's going to get to the 50. Edo will set up left side. They take the snap. Mullins to Edo. Inside, takes a move inside. On the move, breaks the tackle, breaks another. He's to the 25, the 20, cuts back. He's going to take it. Touchdown, Southern Miss. Well, they moved Edo out of the backfield, split him out to the left side, fed it to him in the center of the field. He broke tackle after tackle and takes it 49 yards for a Golden Eagle touchdown. Take the snap, the left-hander looking to throw, being chased and got sacked. 
Dylan Bradley got him again. Back inside the 15, back around the 11 yard line. Mullins shotgun, turns and hands it to the running back and around the left side, here comes Justice Hayes. He will barrel over one out of bounds. Down inside the 35. Hands it off to Justice Hayes, off the right side, cuts it to the outside, 15, 10, cuts inside, diving towards the goal line, and goes down at the one yard line. A good, strong run around the right side. Let's see if Justice Hayes gets it again. Yep, Hayes gets it, trying to get a touchdown, and he does. Touchdown, Southern Miss. The Michigan Wolverine transfer gets a touchdown, and the Golden Eagles lead it. Now 41 to six on Austin P. Taylor left hash, takes the stamp, the left-hander wants to throw, and he will, and it's intercepted. Kalen Reed has got it down the right sidelines, and he is gonna take that one back all the way. He read that one perfectly. Now they bounced off a minute ago. That time he cut in front of the intended receiver and was able to take it the distance. Mullins will work off the right hash. Here's Richard in motion. They fake it to Richard. Now throw it right sidelines, and Justice Hayes makes a catch down inside the 20, finally ridden out of bounds around the 10-yard line. Now put it at the nine, first down Southern Miss. Back down, 28-yard attempt on the way from Sean Field, and it is good. His first kick as a Golden Eagle gets him three points. There's Taylor right hash, and Hands it off to the running back, and nothing there. He got clobbered, lost a couple of yards. They'll shake hands. Austin P. they knew it was going to be tough today, but the Golden Eagles played well and get a 52-6 win. People ship all kinds of things. But what if that thing is a few hundred thousand doses of flu vaccine? that need to be kept at 41 degrees. While being shipped to a country where it's 90 degrees. In the shade. Sound hard? Yeah. Does that mean people in Laos shouldn't get their vaccine? We didn't think so. From figuring it out to getting it done. We're here to help. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this prestigious award. I would like to thank my friends and family. Coming, Mama. As I'm saying, I would also like to thank my educators for all the donors. Without them, I couldn't do anything. And the winner of the first place award for small cities is Hattiesburg, Mississippi, for the education initiative. What are you doing back there, Haley? Feeling like a winner. And we're back, Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Todd Munkin presented by Bank Corp South. Each week we have a feature on one of our senior or some seniors on the football team. Today it's senior cornerback Kalen Reed out of Birmingham, Alabama. And Todd, here's a guy who uh, was forced probably early in his career to play maybe before he needed to, but it probably benefited from a redshirt year uh, when he first got here at Southern Miss, but that's not the case. But probably the most uh, experienced defensive back that you got and, and a guy who makes big plays like he did on Saturday with a 76-yard interception return for a touchdown. No doubt, and, and we're thrilled to death that he's healthy. I think that's the most important thing. Kalen, uh, since he's been here, has battled nagging injuries, and he's healthy, and, and when he plays, He's as good as there is. I mean, he's a leader for us in terms of how he plays. He's capable of making big plays like he showed the other day and in previous games. So, again, um, we're better when he's on the field, and he's only continued to get better. He's one of those guys, and he'll tell you this, he's not one that's going to stand up here in the locker room and probably uh, lead the team in a cheer. But in his own quiet way, uh, he's a leader because he does it out on the field. No doubt. He, he competes in practice. He does it in a quiet way but he does everything right off the field. I mean, he's rarely on a list for missing class or missing an appointment. Um, he's what you want in a football player, and he loves to play. It shows on Saturday. Well, he's the veteran back there in that secondary for Golden Eagles, the uh, four-year starter, guy who's battled injuries, as said, Todd said, through his career, but healthy now, having a good season so far. Let's visit and get to know Golden Eagle cornerback, Kalen Reed. Football sits at the Brave 29, Gibbs. Waits and takes the snap, looks right, throws right. That one is 
Intercepted by Kalen Reed. Reed wow. climbed the ladder, went as high as he could, snagged it and hung on. The reason I wanted to come here out of high school was the big family atmosphere. I, I would come down every week to the games and just hang out with the team after, and they, they made me feel a part of the team when I was still in high school, just committed here. So on signing day, I just felt like there was no other choice. Part of the reason I came here was Darren Wilson. He, he took me under his wing, like right when I got here, him and uh, Grady Brown, they took me under before I even got here. And Darren Wilson, every day, I remember the first day I got to campus, I was out there working stuff with him, working out on the field with him. Whenever I needed something, he just, he'd be there. He just took me under his wing and taught me everything that he did. I try to give the same advice that I got when I came in, like just helping them with the road, whether it be class, film, just how to manage time and how to get adjusted, because I know it was hard for me to get adjusted at first when I got here. So just trying to be a friend and help them out however I can. I thought when I came here I had a good chance of playing. When I got here, you know, I, I knew I would have to work hard for it, work a lot, because we had a lot of DBs here. And then when, when my number got called, I just, I just tried to step up. Because I remember my first game at Nebraska, I like ran out there. I was lightheaded. I'd never seen that many people in <laughs> one stadium. But it was, it was a great experience, and it's helped me now. I would have to say I'm a quiet, like, lead by example type guy. I'm not really a hoorah, because I think that can, only, that can only take you so far. But if you, you just show what you're doing out there, everyone can see and try to replicate that, then it'll, it'll go further. After uh, football's over, I plan to go to law school and study to be a sports attorney. My grandmother's actually a, an attorney, and uh, my mom's friends, some of my dad's friends are attorneys, and I just, I, I like the, I really like arguing, so. <laughs> but, uh, and then I, I want to still be around the aspect of sport, so I figure the two go well, well together. On October 3rd, 1987, at Louisville's Cardinal Stadium, Coach Jim Carmody and the Golden Eagles rolled up 519 yards of total offense, including 402 yards on the ground, on the way to a 65-6 win over the Louisville Cardinals, one of the biggest margins of victory in school history. Led by quarterback Brett Favre, the Golden Eagles jumped to a 37-0 halftime lead and found a way to score in all phases of the game. A 65-6 win over the Louisville Cardinals at Cardinals Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky on October 3rd, 1987 will always be remembered as one of the great moments in Southern Miss football. I'm Maureen Martin. 
director of the DuBard School for Language Disorders. Welcome to Black and Gold Day at the DuBard School. We were founded in 1962 to serve children with speech, language, hearing, and academic challenges such as dyslexia. We are excited to welcome the coaches and the Golden Eagle football team today so that our children can see these great role models and they can also see what children with challenges can do in the right circumstances. Being here today, you know, it's a great accomplishment seeing kids growing up from a young age, working with their disabilities with different programs and teachers that understand their program. With me growing up with dyslexia, it was kind of hard, you know, not knowing what was going on, taking, not catching it until middle school, then finally getting the uh, teaching I need to overcome the disability. But at the same time, I didn't use it as a crutch. I used my disability of dyslexia to move forward and help myself and inspire others to go far, you know what I'm saying? No little disability can hang nobody back. It all, everybody got their own challenges in the world and disability was mine. I, I fought overcome and I'm still graduating school, still in school, so it was a great experience to come out here and talk to the kids and see them all getting young, experiencing guidance from teachers, the great teachers and staff here. So it was a good day to come out here and spend time with the kids. You, want, you ready? On the count of three, we're gonna say it together. You ready? One, two, three. Southern is to the top. So this experience has been incredible, man. Just working with these guys and, and some of these kids, like, 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 like my man here, uh, just, just knowing that I'm being able to give back and, and come in and, 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 and try to be a role model for some of the guys is, is incredible. What'd you do for your birthday? Did you have a cake? Did you have candles? How many candles? Exactly, that's what you should have for nine. It's not so much fun when there's 49 on there. Just letting you know that. Honestly, one of the best experiences of my life. Uh, I wish I could do things like this more often because I haven't. Um, it's, it's no feeling that can be just coming in here as soon as smiling in these kids' faces. Uh, I, I, I advise anybody, if you're a role model, anybody look up to you to continue to just give back to kids, on kids like these, because they have a lot of potential. And uh, just a smile on their face, man, can't nobody beat it. The best feeling in the world, really. It's been a, it's been a really mind-altering uh, experience being here. It's been, it's been very nice to uh, be able to see what these kids go through and, uh, you know, just kind of get back to them and enjoy, and, and, and just kind of enjoy spending some time with them. And I've really enjoyed, uh, being here and, and doing that. So the miss. At Conference USA. Let's be the definition of a good sport. Conduct and attitude. Considered as befitting. Participants in sports. Especially fair play. Courtesy. Striving spirit. Conference USA. Has a history of good sportsmanship. Enjoy the game and be our next good sport. On and off the field. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this prestigious award. I'd like to thank my friends and family. Coming, Mama. As I'm saying, I'd also like to thank my educators for all the done Without them, I couldn't do anything. And the winner of the first place award for small cities is Hattiesburg, Mississippi for the education initiative. What are you doing back there, Haley? Feeling like a winner. And back once again on Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Todd Munkin presented by Bank Corp South. Well, Todd, a little earlier in the show, we uh, showed a visit you made. Uh, I guess it was the Friday before the Mississippi State game over to the Bard School. It's a, an annual visit that the Golden Eagle football team uh, takes over there. And it's their black and gold day. And it's, it's always a lot of fun. Talk about what that experience was like this year. Well, it's great every year to go over there um, for our players. I'm certain they get more out of it than the kids over there get. Um, it's humbling to go over there and see those young people and how hard they're working um, to get where our guys are at. And that message that our guys get a chance to send those young people of never quit, never give up. We have a, we have a lot of young guys on our team that have went through struggles when they were little, but it's, it's great for myself and our, 
our team to go over there and visit with those kids. We always like to ask about Conference USA. I know you keep up with that as you, as you remember the scores from this past weekend. Anything stand out in Conference USA? Well, I thought the Louisiana Tech-Western Kentucky game was a great football game. Two really good teams, two good offenses. Um, you know, I think our conference has done well the first two weeks. But it's, uh, and, and I think Charlotte, Charlotte winning its first two games in, in 1A it, it is, has shown that they're going to be capable and a formidable opponent. So it's going to be very competitive, and we look forward to the rest of the schedule. All right, well, speaking of competitive, you play a good Texas State team this weekend. I guess uh, your first game at Southern Miss, Eagles uh, open the season out here at the Rock with Texas State. But the uh, Eagles are a much better team from that uh, first game three years ago, but so is Texas State. No question. We're a completely different team, and so are they. Uh, you know, is how many years, maybe four or five years into being Division One? i I'm sure they're finally up to 85 scholarships. They've got an outstanding quarterback. Uh, a lot of the same players back on offense, and we have to go there. Uh, I look forward to the challenge. I really do. I think we've got a really good football team and a team that's excited about taking our team on the road and putting our best foot forward. And they've got a, a quarterback who's got some uh, experience under his belt, and he's a guy that uh, can hurt you both ways, running the football and throwing the football. Sure can. He reminds me a lot of Luke McCown. He played for us when I was at Louisiana Tech about 14, 13, 14 years ago, still in the NFL. He can run. He can throw it really quick release been playing a long time, and everything revolves around him. Everything they do revolves around him having the ball, either throwing it or any type of read zone stuff. So he's a good football player. Dennis Francione is their uh, coach, and I'm sure you've competed against him from time to time in your career. When you face one of his teams, what do you expect? Well, they're going to be well coached. You know, I faced him a couple times when they were at uh, A&M, and then also our first year here. He's an offensive guy. Uh, they're going to have a guy that can run the football quarterback, so they're going to put you in some run-pass conflicts, and uh, they're going to play hard. So we're excited about the opportunity. We look forward to, to seeing how we, uh, we hit the road at, uh, in San Marcos. All right, well, congratulations on the win over Austin P. and we'll see you next week. Thanks, John. All right, Golden Eagles at Texas State on Saturday night. Big ball game for the Golden Eagles as they step out on the road for the first time here in 2015. Hey, don't forget, Monday nights we're at Mugshots Grill and Bar in Hattiesburg for the Golden Eagle Hotline. Why don't you come out, visit with us, talk a little Golden Eagle football. That'll do it, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Another Inside Look into Golden Eagle football. This edition of Southern Miss Sports Today with Todd Munkin has been presented by Bancor South, right where you are, and brought to you in part by the City of Hattiesburg, a proud sponsor of Southern Miss Athletics, UPS. From figuring it out to getting it done, UPS is here to help. Hattiesburg Coca-Cola. Want a taste of everything? Drink Coke Zero with real Coke taste and zero calories. This has been a presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.